I did not think this day would come. When we first started this eight years ago, it looked so far away. 1644 was just a huge amount. I was so full of joy for all of the hard work. We have reached the living wage and gone above it. It is, to me, it's just amazing. The people on the top, 1651. <laughs> it started in 2008. Before that, we never spoke about our salary. That was a secret. Christy and I are in a video where both of us call it the dirty little secret of Yakima School District. And it was true because nobody wanted to talk about it. You were embarrassed. Living Wage brought it out and we brought it out big time. I, I make below poverty level wages. I personally have had to go and, and swallow my pride and get, you know, food assistance for my children. And the shame shouldn't be with me. It should be with the district. Last year at this time, I was living without power, without running water, without heat. I had nothing. I try not to spend any money out of my paycheck on food. I try to always just get everything that I need on food stamps because I can't afford to even pull out, you know, $50 for groceries. Um, I rent from my mother. Right now, I live with my grandparents. Actually, I'm not able to afford housing on my own. There's no way a person, even without children, can support themselves on this wage. In the very beginning, I don't believe that any of us felt that it would be possible to have a living wage or any, anywhere near a living wage. We did a lot of, of hard work. We went to a lot of organizing trainings. Um, our members weren't really on board and that was a very frustrating process. There's pride on one hand. There's such a tremendous love for the students and, and uh, the pride in doing that. And yet there's the fear at home. How am I going to buy the groceries? Where am I going to go? In 2008, the base pay was 11.86 for paraeducators to start at. It just looked unattainable. And the first bargain, getting a nickel, you know, your hopes go down. And the second bargain, we got that dollar, but we only got the 38 cents at the top. And it took 16 months. We kind of started with the stories, our stories. You know, where are you now? Where are you coming from? What do you have to offer as a paraeducator? Why are you a paraeducator? People were able to see that it was okay to have a voice and there, you weren't going to be penalized in your, in your employment or on your building level. We had rallied our members together um, very strongly last bargain, but we also had to call on the WEA crisis team to come in and help us. We had gotten to a point where we weren't getting anywhere. They were not budging. We weren't sure exactly what to do. That was a horrible bargain. The crisis team came and they gave us some suggestions and to be perfectly honest, we had to really do some things that we weren't necessarily comfortable with doing in order to shake up the district and let them know that we mean business and that we deserve this. So there was a lot of flyers that were handed out at football games. We went to neighborhoods. And we also kind of let out some little secrets that a lot of the community did not know about what was going on with our district. One of the things that was said to us when we first went to the bargaining table this time was we don't want to go through that again. And I think that was one of the reasons why they took us very seriously. This bargain started out wonderful. They, ne they didn't fight us. When we first went to that table, they still wanted to take everything. And we just said, no, we're not going in that direction. I believe that with the help of UNISERV, with the help of WEA, with the help of YEU, 
with the help of other members in other units, we have become this strong. There has been quite a few times that um, we all have, have felt defeated, but we just knew what a great cause this was. NEA and WA offered up some great trainings and some great workshops. Every one of you needs to believe in your self-worth. Never, ever be just a, I'm just a custodian. I'm just a instructional assistant. I'm just a, never, ever allow yourself to be just a. Organizing for Power was amazing. Every time I started to feel down or defeated, I would go to these trainings and I would be so just uplifted and just full of fire. When I started out, I didn't even want to say anything bad about the district. Now I'll stand up in front of 300 people and say what they are. So there's a lot to be said about organizing, uh, training, Wow, it's great when you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I think I have grown uh, personally in this as well, and I believe in myself a whole lot more than I did before. And I think there's a lot of our members that believe that too now about themselves. Constantly keep evaluating what's working, what's not working, trying new strategies, you know, bringing the community in was a big piece that we worked on. I mean, we were always going back to the drawing board. Definitely don't, don't give up. Don't give up. With the bargain that we have just completed, this is going to make a huge difference in, in the things that they're going to be able to accomplish. It's a $2, $3 difference. Just think of that hour-wise, three, four hundred dollars a month extra in your paycheck. Huge difference. Huge difference. I, um, I still can't buy a car, but I don't have all the bills. We've got what we fought for, and it's, it just feels so, so wonderful to be heard and appreciated. It's an honest, right thing that we're after. More money for our families, more money for our pocket. We didn't deserve to be poverty level people. I work hard all day with my kids. I deserved my living wage and the union helped me get it.